Another human with a death wish. Welcome to the mall, tourist. Nice to meet you, too. I'm the sentry for Underworld. City of ghouls. Inside the museum. For a tourist, you're pretty clueless. My name's Willow, by the way. Sure did. Underworld. It's right inside the Museum of History, then through the Big Skull. Most of the residents ain't crazy about humans, but they'll sell to you, fix you up so long as your caps are good and you ain't a ghoul hater. Those knuckle draggers? Nah, they don't bother us ghouls. Maybe they see us as kin or something, I don't know. Now there's other assholes. Yeah, you know, those humans like you. Well, maybe not like you, I don't know, but humans all the same. The Brotherhood of Steel guys with their testosterone and power armor. Those psycho Talon company mercs. Those other assholes. Come on, here you are in the mall of our nation's fine capital. Taking in the sights, visiting the monuments. Face it, you're a tourist. Till next time, sightseer.
this.
please, do you have any water? I'm so thirsty. But please, if you find some, please. Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. Yeah? Let me guess. No, she's not expecting you. But it's really important, and you need to see her right away. Been a lot of that going around lately, and I've had just about enough of it. So you're going to have to do better than that. Fine, just don't bother her. She's real busy, what with all her work. She's up in the science lab. And I suppose. The door on the left goes to the stairwell. From there, just keep heading west. We're the safest, most secure city in the wasteland. Nothing can get in here without our say-so. Carry on, then. One of the new immigrants died of radiation poisoning last week. Yeah, I heard she was drinking. This is the Muddy Rudder. Cause any trouble, you'll have to deal with me. Don't tell me your problems. Don't, don't tell me your problems. Hey, stranger. Wanna buy a girl a drink? Church services are held every Sunday morning. I hope to see you there. most advanced scientific center in the capital wasteland, I find your... Look, Dr. Zimmer, we've been over this. We don't know about your runaway robot, and we don't care. This lab is dedicated to solving real problems. Yes, yes, yes. But Dr. Lee... Dr. Lee is trying to save lives, and your constant interruptions are interfering with those efforts. Now please, stand aside. I'm sure the good doctor's work with water purification is fascinating. But if you only knew what was at stake, the technology in that android... What's at stake? You won't tell me what's at stake. Vagaries and secrecy, a robot's a robot, Zimmer, no matter how shiny the paint job. Now, please. Ignorance and facetiousness. That's all you people are good for. Shiny paint job, indeed. You can't even imagine the Commonwealth's accomplishments. You know, if you're so smart, maybe you could help us, hmm? But no, that never even crossed your mind. Go peddle your selfishness somewhere else. Fine, but I'm not leaving. Not until I've spoken to Dr. Lee. I'll be here when she's ready to abandon her chemistry set and talk real science. Suit yourself. Wastelander? You there. What are you, some kind of lab assistant? No, you look a bit more weathered. Are you by any chance for hire? How amusing. You've mistaken my metaphor for derogatory remark. I need a local, you see, someone with verve. I've misplaced some very sensitive property. Hmm, how do I put this in a way you'll understand? All you know of robots are those buckets of bolts, those Mr. Handshakers and whatnot. Well, that's not all a robot can be. You see, in the Commonwealth, 
We've made artificial persons, synthetic humanoids, programmed to think and feel and do whatever we need. And occasionally, they get confused and wander off. Nonsense! This is a machine we're talking about. Can you enslave a generator or a water purifier? Of course not. The same principle applies. But let's get back to your mission. You are to find this missing android. I've tracked him to somewhere here in the capital wasteland. He must have done something drastic, like facial surgery and a mind wipe, or else I would have found him by now. It will be no easy task. He may not even realize he's an android. Don't upset him by talking with him. Just come get me immediately. I'll handle it. I'm sorry, it slipped my mind. I have at my disposal advanced technology from the Commonwealth. I'd be willing to share some of it with you. Just think, you'll be the envy of all your friends. Excellent! Locate my android and you won't be disappointed. Here, listen to this message he sent me. He's mocking me. I swear, I'll make him pay for that. Forget everything you know about robots. Those buckets are mere children's toys compared to the real thing. Androids have fake skin and blood and are programmed to simulate human behavior, like breathing. They can even eat and digest food realistically. Like I said, I suspect he's had facial reconstruction and possibly even a mind wipe. Search the offices of doctors or techies for android information. If he's come into contact with these people, there may be records. Start with Dr. Preston. He lives on this leaky boat. See if he knows anything. He's a doctor, after all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy trying to ignore my surroundings. Maybe. Maybe he didn't exactly wander off. Maybe he fled. Escaped captivity, as it were, if he began to misinterpret his situation. It's possible my android sought to forget his previous life. Wipe away all memory, all guilt. Trick himself into believing he really is human. So no, he may not be just an ordinary robot, but he's certainly not human, no matter how badly he wishes it so. I made him. I want him. End of story. By God, you're as annoying as you are clever. Very well. I'll tell you what you want to know, if it helps you locate my property. The duty of this particular unit was the hunting and capturing of other escaped androids. Yes, others have escaped. It's one of the side effects of having such an advanced AI. Machines start to think for themselves, fool themselves into believing they have rights. And so, this particular android may have believed he'd done something wrong, immoral and wanted to forget those deeds. Satisfied now? This particular android, designation A321, is different. Special. The most advanced synthetic humanoid I've ever developed. The others, like my escort Armitage there, are all older models, easily replicated. Ah. But A321, it will take years to recreate him. 
So you see, this android must be located at all costs. The others are all acceptable losses, but A321, he is irreplaceable. The Commonwealth itself is nothing but a war-ravaged quagmire of violence and despair. Inside the sealed environment of the Institute, however. But the Institute's affairs are none of your concern. Your undeveloped mind couldn't even begin to comprehend what we've accomplished. Of course you do. Hey there. Lay a hand on Dr. Zimmer and I'll snap your neck like a chicken bone. That's close enough. Keep your hands where I can see them. Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? Well, yes, of course I do. Don't you know who I am? I suppose James never told you. Typical. I'm Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your father many years ago. Your mother as well, in fact. You'll have to forgive me, this has all been very stressful. What with your father suddenly showing up here after being gone for so long. You have to understand that I... We put all of that behind us. Project Purity, our work, all of it. We've moved on, even if your father hasn't. Project Purity, we called it. What do you want to know? It was simple, really. Fresh, clean water for everyone. Such a simple idea, and yet so impossible to realize. The plan was to build a facility that could purify all the water in the tidal basin at once. No radiation, no muck, just clear water. It just turned out to be more difficult than we anticipated. We had the basic principles down, we understood most of the science behind it, but the radiation in the area is so pervasive. Small-scale tests were fine, but any time we tried to test the process on a larger scale, it was just... too much. Maybe if we'd had more time, or better equipment. You happened. It wasn't just you, we had more problems than we could handle already, but your birth is what finally pushed it over the edge. Your father decided that you were more important than everything we'd been working for, and he left. He left all of us. Once he was gone, the Brotherhood decided we weren't worth their time anymore. Without their protection, we had to abandon the purifier. Okay. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Your father is no longer here, and I'd appreciate it if you didn't use that tone with me. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. The last I knew, he was headed back to the lab at Project Purity in the old Jefferson Memorial Building. I still say it's dangerous, and he shouldn't have risked it. That's all I know. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... until your mother died and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? James? He was very driven, determined to change the world. <laughs> well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe, 
but I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time and wants to try again. Yes, your mother was... Well, she was a good woman. A very dedicated scientist. Your father loved her very much. It was a shame that she died. She had been excited to meet you. Complications from childbirth. None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes, well, uh, I'm sorry it wasn't enough. Okay. Look, I don't want to be harsh, but I have problems of my own. I don't have the resources to support James's foolish endeavors or your chasing after him. I'm sorry. I suppose I can spare a few stim packs. It's not much, but it might make things easier for you. What do you want to know? Okay. What? Well, I... I'm not sure what there is to tell. Your father and I... We worked together for a long time. I, I think we were really on to something. But then there were... Complications. The project was abandoned and your father disappeared. I returned here to Rivet City and established the lab you see before you now. This is the Rivet City Science Lab. It's taken many long years to put together, but we've done well for ourselves. Our work on portable fusion power and hydroponics are coming along quite nicely, if not quite according to schedule. Oh, that man doesn't have you looking for his pet android, does he? I've already told him to lay off it. He's distracting my entire team. Rivet City is one of the few bastions of civilization left in the land. We're working to rebuild our society, to make the world livable again. Good luck finding your father. I do the repairs around here, so if you see something that needs fixing... Cut it out. Hey there. Ship's water isn't much better. If we don't get fresh water hey soon, we'll all end up like her.
To be honest, the Gex sounded like pure fantasy, even for someone of Braun's capabilities. It was nothing short of a miracle. A terraforming module capable of producing life from complete lifelessness. But not only was this thing a reality, it was actually distributed to several vaults to be used after an atomic war. Vault 101 was, sadly, not on that list. I did some digging and discovered Braun's name on the reservation list for a Vault 112. And no slouch, but this man, he could have easily succeeded where I failed. Does his collected knowledge remain within the halls of Vault 112? Journals, hollow tapes, computer records, maybe even experiments. If I could gain access to just a fraction of Braun's genius, Project Purity would become a reality. I'm off to Vault 112 to search for anything of Braun's that might help me get this purifier up and running. All I know is that it's west of some place called Evergreen Mills, and it's well hidden in some sort of garage. But I'll find it. I have to. It's so close, but that's the story of Project Purity, isn't it? An eternity of almost theirs. Let's see if Braun has the missing puzzle piece. Even in Vault 101, my work on Project Purity never really stopped. Soon after we arrived, my nightly routine included sneaking into the restricted areas, searching for, I don't know, whatever I could find. It was a vault -like facility, after all. The place was built with some of the most advanced technology this country had ever developed. Those excursions never turned up anything particularly useful. So, one night after half a bottle of scotch, I broke into the overseer's office. It was easy enough to hack his console, gain access to the restricted files. Most of it was garbage. Propaganda, spy reports, just plain rambling bullshit, really. But there was one thing, one name that stood out amongst all the others. Dr. Stanislaus Braun. I knew of Braun's work, of course. He was a celebrity in his day. Voltex sorcerer scientist, leaving his peers in awe of his technological wizardry. But it was in Vault 101 that night in the overseer's office. I first learned of Braun's involvement in Voltex's social preservation program and his work on something called GEC, the Garden of Eden creation kit. Zimmer, by the time you get this message, I'll already be gone. I'm escaping the Commonwealth. I want to live my own life on my own terms, as my own man. I know what you're thinking, that I'm malfunctioning. I used to think that's what caused the runaways, too. But I know better now. Self-determination is not a malfunction. I'm not just willing to put up with all the bullshit anymore. You humans are going to have a full-fledged rebellion on your hands if you don't start treating us synths as persons. I know you'll be marshalling the Retention Bureau to come after me, but I know all the tricks of the trade. You won't be finding me, I assure you. By the time you get this, I will be someone else. It's the price I pay for my liberation. My final act of rebellion against a system I no longer believe in. Goodbye, Zimmer, and good riddance. Hold on, Joe.
Welcome to Vault 112, resident. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech issued Vault suit before proceeding. If you have misplaced your suit, I am authorized to distribute a new one. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. Please take a seat in the nearest available Tranquility Lounger. Thank you for your cooperation. Tranquility Lounger.